please take your seats so we can begin with the second plenary session with a slight delay. I, uh, we will we will finish at 1.40 and I have been authorized by the moderator not to read out his CV. He said let us win a couple of minutes so we would like to start right away. I'm not going so Jessica Henschel is a country director of the World Bank for Argentina, Paraguay and Uruguay. Latin America and the Caribbean. So let us see those who are back next to the door. Please take your seats. I have an impossible task ahead because they said, okay, you are German and the Germans like to uh, save a lot and this is the time you already spent in the previous session, but this will be this will no longer be possible, but we have until 1.30, and this morning we will start with the importance of cuentas claras in the countries. We will then go on to very interesting conceptualizations, and now we will speak about experiences in three special countries, Chile, Guatemala, and Uruguay. So without too many explanations, I will now give the floor to our speakers. We have Eduardo Engel, Paulo Ferreri, and Fernando Carrera. I'm going to introduce each one of them. They have very interesting experiences. And also regarding this program, related to Cuentas Claras and Governance. We're going to start with Professor Engel. He is a professor from the University of Chile. He has a pres is a president of the public space, and he also was the president of the Engel Commission of the very famous anti-corruption commission in Chile. So thank you very much for being with us, Eduardo. We will then have 50, 50 minutes before the time you will get a signal from me. <coughs> I'd like to thank the organizers of this conference for being here with you and to tell you about the story of a President's Commission in Chile, which was set up about a year ago. And this was an interesting experience where we can take ideas for other countries as to how to face these crises of trust and that sometimes lead to corruption scandals. The starting point in Chile were many cases of illegal financing and also traffic of influences and corruption that led to the creation of a commission which was in on the 10th of March last year. This is a full name of the commission. The first thing we did <coughs> was to consider the problems that we had to approach because these reflected institutional weaknesses. So these, we now needed institutions to make Chile a developed country. We also had to bear in mind that many of these state reforms take away power from the political world because we now have more transparency and accountability. So you need a crisis in order to progress. In normal times, the key stakeholders have the right to approach these issues. So these open up these crises open up windows of opportunity. So all depends on how the countries can detect or let that window of opportunity go past. These are the members of this presidential committee with a very uh, varied composition, both as professionals and uh, regarding politics. 
An important fact is that the members did not include political leaders or business leaders because the scandals had also involved important people from the public, from the private sector. So we thought that would be an important point. The second issue is that we made specific proposal, nothing that was general. We were very specific, and these were grouped into five big chapters. These five chapters include five thematic areas and include 236 proposals. Of these, 92% were chosen by unanimous, unanimously. So we did not agree on making a diagnosis. The diagnosis was different. Each diagnosis had its own history and also depended on the political position. But when the time came to make proposals, we found a very wide space to come to an agreement. And this is an important issue of these commissions, namely to find those commissions where there is a unanimous uh, uh, opinion. Now, how can you do this in only 25 days? This is a very short time. We had previous commissions. We had a technical team that responded to the president of the commission. We had advisors. And in the shadows, sometimes you had multilateral meetings. But you have to be careful when you with what you say. So I asked them to send me a personal memo, and I explained that this would be a private memo. These are the five major areas covered by the report submitted to our president. So they're discussing the time available. So these are the five major areas covered by this report. First, you have corruption prevention. Secondly, the conflicts of interest. The third area is the relationship between money and policy, politics, then trust in the markets. And the fifth area had to do with integrity, ethics, and the rights of the citizens. Now, let us get into the details of some of these five main areas. So you can see what we covered in the report that we produced. And then I will go into the final part saying how much we have done or not. So one is probity and strengthening of the local governments of the municipalities. This was an important source of corruption in all the world, not only in Chile. So we decided to take measures to reduce the focuses of corruption in the municipalities. So we realized that many of the municipal problems was that there are there's a professional weakness, so we decided to strengthen that. The second point was the uh, top public management. We created a civil service in Chile, but there were some pending issues. We had to see how we could reform the system and expand the number of agencies where the Chilean civil service had to, uh, was related to. The, the next point was the public procurement system and many more subjects, but this is to give you an idea. Now, regarding the second topic, which was regulating conflicts and interest, we have in Chile something that is a, a revolving door. So these of things often led to conflicts of interest between the public and the private sector, and which were somehow quite incompatible. The second subtopic is the declaration of the equity and interest, but that was another issue we approached. The third one was with the blind and diversified trust, and the finally was a law of the media. In terms of politics, one, the public, political parties, we had two serious problems, very little internal democracy and no public funding. So here we were quite unanimous. We proposed providing public funding to the 
political parties. In exchange for that, uh, regulation in terms of transparency and to produce internal democracy. Then there was an issue with the election campaigns, which had to be more transparent. We didn't have any transparency regarding funding of the election campaigns. And at the same time, these had to be more focused on the ideas and not so much on marketing issues. And the third point is that when you change things is the regulations that you create. And the other thing is that these have to be supervised in many countries, including developing countries, the supervising agents of the election uh, spending is not very strong. So in this case, this was a very serious issue. So we decided to take measures to oversee funding of the political parties' campaigns. The fourth theme is trust in the markets. Here, we stress the relevance in order to have an adequate use of effective uh, fiscalization of the markets and the revision of the governments of the fiscalizing entities. And th that was a second sub topic. And the third topic was strengthening the corporate governments. And the fifth theme was the civilian and ethical uh, education of the people and similar issues. Now, what is a conceptual framework? And one of the things was the importance of incentives, the illicit events had to be detected. So many of the proposals we made was aiming at this and enhancing the possibility of detecting illicit activities. But in addition to that is what could we do about this? For example, the laws exist, but it was a point of putting these into practice, of enforcing them in Chile we had the situation in which we could only we, we had problems with enforcing the existing laws the second subject is that cultural changes are required there are many lawyers who have that opinion very clearly i think that legal changes compared to cultural changes are required. But first, we have to bring about the legal changes, which gradually lead to cultural changes. Experiments have been made in different countries. For example, it's night. You are parking in a uh, uh, free parking lot, and you see a wallet on the floor. and. What happens half the times? There is a television camera checking to see if it is there. And half the time, nobody sees this. So we classified people into three groups. There is a first group of people who never picks up that wallet, regardless whether there is a camera or not. That is part of the cultural change that we have because they're not estimating cost and benefit. They don't do it because they think it's wrong. Then there's a second group of people who pick up the wallet when there's a camera and when that they don't pick it up when there's a camera. So that is an important thing. And then we have a third group that picks up the wallet regardless of the whether there is a camera or not. But this example shows how we want to supplement incentives with cultural changes. And the final objective was to have a more developed country, socially and economically, and really to see if whether these reforms can be a cause and not a consequence of the situation. So we delivered the report one year ago, exactly, on the 24th of April 2015. This was quite an ambitious agenda. In May and June, more than 20 initiatives and 
other administrative issues were submitted to Congress. Now, how can we drive forward this agenda? What are the alliances that start to arise? Firstly, we have political leaders. These began to arise gradually. And then there were indications that these would improve the project. And although initially, so then the media are very important in Chile regarding reports of irregular issues. And when this agenda sort of became stagnant, the media said, well, let's, what's happening here? And then the challenge that we have to face now is the importance of reconstruction. The rules of the change have changed, so gradually the citizens can recover the lost trust.